Come here now, girl. Hello and welcome to another three quick tips for City Skylines with me, Bomb Bomb B. I'm Bomb Bomb B. You're very, very welcome. As always, the tips in today's show will be 100% vanilla. And if you are playing on console, I can't see any reason why these tips won't work for you. Although I can't verify this not owning the game on console, but the base game should be the same on both and you shouldn't have any problems at all with these tips. Today we're going to look at three tips about planning and avoiding some of the most common problems that we see in the game. Now one of those problems is well known as the death wave. Now let's explain the death wave for you. Well you start building the city and you zone in a large area and everybody starts moving in from out of town. Now all of these people are of about the same age, let's say 30 years of age buying their first property. Now what happens is you're on top of things. You've got a good fire coverage, you've got no crime, you've got good healthcare so nobody is dying early. And you've got a little crematorium there that basically, well, it's not seeing any action at all. And that's because there are no unexpected deaths. The game doesn't have road traffic accidents or anything like that. However, all of your sims will die. And they'll all die at about the same age. Let's say 80. So after 50 years of sim life, moving in at 30, dying at 80, well, they'll all start dying at about the same time, if they've all moved in at the same time as each other. And then your poor little crematorium will be completely overrun, trying to deal with all of these bodies all stacking up at once. It'll be like the zombie apocalypse. How can we avoid this? Well, there are a couple of solutions. One of them is the a reactionary solution, which is to put down as many crematoriums as you can when you desperately need them. It's not really a solution, is it? The other solution is to plan ahead. And planning ahead means building different parts of your city all at the same time. So here we'd zone in the small section. Then we go to a different part of the city, zone in the small section there. Then a different part of the city again, and zone in the small section there, before returning to this area and zoning in a little bit more, and moving on, and so forth. So that you're zoning in just smaller sections, and when people do start dying, it won't be quite as much en masse as it would do one big zone like this. Now, uh, on top of death waves, another problem that we quite often see is not enough workers, especially with commercial zones. Now, commercial zones, they kind of need a lower educated worker. But if you're like me, well, I like to provide good education for my citizens. Let's go over and have a little look at my schooling area over here. Well, we've got the elementary school right next door to the high school. And, well, we haven't quite got round to putting a university in yet. But I think if we did, we'd put that right next to the high school just to annoy the, uh, the older students. Now, what this will do is it'll give some really good educational coverage to this part of town. The problem we're going to have, though, is that once they are fully educated, well, they're not really want to go into a commercial, will they? Let's face it, as somebody who's in the commercial trade myself, uh, if I had a better education, I'd probably, probably be looking for a better paid job, maybe as a doctor or as a captain of industry, not as a YouTuber, even though I enjoy it. So anyways, yes, we have a really well covered educational area here. Now, to make sure that we've got enough workers for commercial, we need to have a less well-educated area. So what we would do is we would have a different part of town, more low-grade downtown part of town, I guess, like our original city over here, where we have no education at all. Now, admittedly, this is a little bit close to our, um, our new area with the schools and our residents would be able to get across and get some education from one place to the other because they are so close. But uh, if you were to separate them up by a little bit more and have uh, fewer educational services here, maybe just go into elementary or to high school level, then you would have plenty of people to work in your commercial zone. And if we had our commercial district between these two little blocks here, then, well, everybody's going to have access to the shops and everybody is going to have, uh, well, both the uh, commercial zones would have access to plenty of workers as well. So that would be a way around fixing your not enough workers problem for your commercial zones. 
Right, so we've had a look at two of the problems within the city. What about the third one? And this one, this one's down to taste, but I think it's a definitely a good solution. There are two sorts of rail travel. We have passenger services, which we have here on the left-hand side, and then we have freight services over on the right-hand side. Now, having good freight services is quite often key to keeping things like power stations and so forth running. Now, what can happen you know, is you can have an awful lot of trains on those tracks and they can start clocking up. And if you've got a lot of passenger services getting in the way, in the way of the freight trains, well, that can be a problem. So keeping your freight and passenger lines completely separate is probably a really good key tip. So this way, just gonna have freight on the freight lines, just gonna have passenger on the passenger lines and uh, all is good and clear. Don't connect them up in any point and even on the edge of the map we go all the way to the edge of the map well we have the two outgoing connections here with both going to two different cities in real life and uh, yes one would be just for freight so we just have freight to Rockville and we just have passengers to oh, I don't know Bonbon bon Town or wherever there is on the edge of the map as well. So that's about it simple as that keep your freight and your commercial lines separate if you do want to cross one over the other then a little tunnel underneath is probably the best way to keep them separate but don't connect them up and you will be absolutely fine so that's it that's another three quick tips from me bon bon b there'll be another show coming next week i've got uh, one or two little surprises in uh, next week's show including one of my favorite tips as well of all so do make sure you tune in for that one got two previous shows do check those out as well one will be linked on the page as you speak now and i'll see you very very soon for three more quick tips with bon bon b i've been bon bon b you've been very very welcome don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and i'll see you very very soon